so varied. Like, this is, let's see if you can see it. I exist, exi, and it's like three books. Um, this could come up on the reimagining question. Yeah, this is like one of my favorites. You can read okay. it so many different ways. Uh, okay. Um, excellent. I'll, I'll, that's great. And it's called I Exist I? No, um, bear with me. Sorry, I must heard. I Exist, Exist I. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Anyway, I've got like five here. Um, but as many as you want or have time for. Okay. Well, usually we keep these to about 20 to 25 minutes. So that's kind of what we'll be looking to do. Um, I mean, in a way, if it was up to me, um, there would be an that audience for five hour conversations of show and tell, honestly. Um, um, you lose people. You might lose people. You might lose a couple people, possibly. I've been explicitly instructed by the director of Poetry London because I tend to be a bit long-winded in conversation sometimes because I really enjoy it. Um, to he said, okay, Kev, 25, maybe, okay, maybe 30, but 25 is starting to, we're going to start to, like, okay, all right, David, all right. I get it. <laughs> um, okay. Um, all right, and so I think that we've got a sense of a bit of structure in terms of how we'll move through these, and and then we'll take time. Feel free to allow silences to be in thought, because you know, don't feel like you have to, like, you know, we'll just be. You know what I mean? That's good. Uh, that'll help me. I need to like get things in order, or sometimes I'll like have little panic attacks, and then okay. that just makes it real awkward for you. So. Yeah. Uh, we're in it together it's okay all right okay. yeah all right um all right with amy martins executive director of jack pine press this is episode nine of talking with the presses presented by poetry london online um amy thank you for joining me this afternoon thanks kevin um so i wonder to begin whether i could ask you um how you first became involved with Jack Pine Press, which I understood, which I understand took place two years ago. Uh, yeah, okay. So my background is actually in fine arts, in studio arts, um, in sculpture and mixed media. And my practice revolves a lot around the book as object um, and ideas of narrative. And so when I found out what Jack Pine was doing and how close they were to me, I got really interested in that, the way they facilitate and find many ways of like marrying the book object and literatures together. Uh, and I got involved as a volunteer director in early 2018 to kind of consult on the in-house publishing that they were doing at the time. Um, and the sense of uh, book as art object, um, we're straying a little bit from the structure that we just discussed, but um, I wonder if we could bring this in um, now. Um, um, if not uniquely, at least uncommonly, Jack Pine, I understand, uh, requests sort of prototype copies of the, or um, proof of concept submissions of the, um, of the chat books that you potentially like to publish. Um, and I wonder if you'd say a few words about um, what it is about those sort of proof of concept submission. Uh, uh, I'm doing a bad job. We have to start over. See, now I'm, 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 I'm too self-conscious. <laughs> no, no, it's not you. It's, this is totally me. I, I just realized how, how performative I can be and like how needless that is. And I'm putting too much sort of pressure on myself, I think. So I think, can we start over again? Do you mind? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. All right. I just have to center myself a little bit. Can I do that too? If I like totally lose it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, look, I mean, I, I don't have anything to do this evening. So if you don't have anything to do, we can, we can get this wait until it's right. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm gonna have a sip of tea and then, <laughs> Okay. All right. 
um, with Amy Martins, Executive Director of Jack Pine Press. This is episode nine of Talking with the Press as presented by Poetry London Online. Um, and Amy, I understand that you became involved with Jack Pine Press in 2018. And um, I wanted to acknowledge that it was founded in 2002 by Tim Lilburn, Sherry Benning, Jennifer Still, Heather Benning, Rosalie Benning, and Helen Marzolf. Um, and has since then published more than 70 limited edition hand-bound chat books written and designed by Saskatchewan and Canadian artists. Um, and I wonder if you'd say a few words about your background in the arts and um, how that complemented Jack Pine, what Jack Pine was doing at the time you encountered the press in 2018. Yeah, for sure. Um, so my background is in fine arts in the studio arts. I'm a sculptor and mixed media artist. Um, and my work centers a lot around the book as object and ideas of narrative um, in the arts. And when I found out uh, that what Jack Pine was working on and how close they were to me, I got really interested in the projects they were working on. Mm -hmm. um, some of them do such an interesting job of uh, blurring the lines between literature and uh, the structure of the book. And that was fascinating. So I got involved as a volunteer director in early 2018 to excuse me, kind of consult on the in-house publishing we were doing at the time and have stayed on since then. Lovely. So um, um, this question of narrative insofar as the physical form of the chat book is presented um, plays a part in um, I Exist, Exist I, um, a chat book that was not too long ago released with Jack Pine. And it bears on this question of sort of reimagining maybe what we conventionally think of as a sort of linear narrative moving through from the beginning to the end of the chat book and allows some volition to the reader in terms of how they engage with the narrative. And I wonder if you'd say a few words about that particular chat book in the context of the work that Jack Pine produces. Um, yeah, so this is I Exist, Exist I. Um, and it's three small chat books bound in one. And uh, the works in it actually explore two people's narratives and perspectives um, as they move towards meeting each other and their lives sort of intertwine. And so how you read it doesn't have to be one way or the other. You're moving through their experience um, that's taking place in multiple places in time. And the form of the book complements that so beautifully and the way that you interact with it uh, just like, that's amazing to me. and. Only Jack Pine, I think, uh, can bring a book like that to life, um, which is so exciting for me. Um, so you mentioned this idea of like sort of two perspectives merging um, in the book, and I wonder how that's rendered in the object of the book itself. I mean, could you talk to us a little bit about the structure? The physical structure of the book? Mm -hmm. um, so it's opening like this from the front and moving through one perspective. Mm. Again, like this from the back, moving through somebody else's time. And then got to twist it to get into the secret third narrative that is shared. Oh. Does that make sense? Isn't that amazing? It is, yes, it does make sense. It makes great sense. And um, so, um, so my sense is that your fine arts background would have sort of grounded you in um, a sense of how we can reimagine what a book can be or what narrative can be, like insofar as narrative relates to the physical object of the book. And I wonder if you maybe say a word or two about other projects in your past in that regard or ways in which you've gone about the process of creating a linear narratives in the work that you've produced in the past? 
any linear narratives in my work. Um, or am I, I'm presuming that they exist there. No, that's great. Uh, for example, I, I once made a story machine. Um, it used clockwork to move symbols across a map. Um, and so in different times, you would have different figures or symbols interacting with each other. And there's an imagined narrative there. Um, and they would move away from one another and towards others. And so that's a story, that's multiple stories outside of a book and outside of words. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was exciting and big, <laughs> uh, just for one example. Um, I got really interested in carving stones and the idea <laughs> of, like archeology span and how we build stories out of objects that way. Um, so went on kind of a, a journey there. Mm. Um, this is great. Um, um, I understand you may have on hand another of Jack Pine's, uh, chat books. Um, I wonder if you'd say a word or two about one of them. Um, here, this is Sky Tales by Charmaine Cadeau. This was hand printed in 2019. Um, and it's full of secrets. <laughs> it, <laughs> it explores themes of uh, surveillance and sort of spy culture and um, codes and within it are secrets and codes. Um, it comes with a black light to find some of them. Wow. Um, and it comes with hints, but uh, I think you could get through it not ever quite finding all of the allusions to, to those themes that she's working on that she's hidden within this book. And it's gorgeous to pick up and it's gorgeous to feel. Um, so that one was so exciting to get a prototype for. It came in like a brown paper bag and with this black light and we had to, we were exploring <laughs> it together. Oh, so exciting. Um, so I mentioned the names of those who were there at the founding of Jack Pine Press. Um, and I thought that, well, I don't think that it would, it, it's, it's good to mention, I think the board of directors who are currently in, in place, um, Sarah Enns, Rilla Friesen, and Logan McManus. Um, correct me if I pronounced any of those incorrectly. Okay. Um, I wonder if you'd say, now I'm really putting you on the spot, but I wonder if you'd say a word about, if not each of them individually, uh, or their respective backgrounds, but, um, um, how you'd characterize the sort of choral voice that that you make together um, with the press and how that sort of establishes maybe a, a, a vision or an ethos is a better word than vision um, for for what you're doing now okay yeah so jack pine press is a not-for-profit with a board of directors um, like a lot of traditional presses but we never have really operated that way we've always been uh, more of a collective, and originally we were a collective, um, and our board of directors are really lovely. They're amazing and brilliant. Um, they're also very hands-on, and they come with their own, like, really diverse skill set, and uh, it just wouldn't work without that. Excuse me. So there's a couple of fantastic editors, um, someone whose tech and event planning uh, and design background is brilliant, and me kind of coming in with. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, please, please. This is life. With my arts background, and together we're like just a, a brilliant synergy, I think. Anyway, mostly them, mostly them, but. Uh, um, kind of blending our skill sets to kind of hold the hands of these creators and sort of bring their ideas to life. Sorry, is that like a good answer? 
That's a great answer. Um, um, so how many, the print runs are of generally of 75, is that right? Give or take, yep. And how many, um, how many chat books does Jack Pine Press um, offer per year? Um, three to six in a year. Um, okay. Artists are interesting and sometimes it does end up being a really organic process with like some ebb and flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I don't know much about the, the poetry scene in Saskatoon, um, but um, I mean, um, I'm wondering about how COVID has uh, had an impact on um, Jack Pine, like it's had an impact on everyone, it seems at this point, and um, whether um, there's a launch uh, coming up, if that's going to be online, or um, how you'll go about the process of um, bringing these extraordinary um, creations uh, to the people who most need them. Oh, thank um, Yeah, so like everybody, we've been heavily impacted by COVID, and a lot of our publishing dates have been pushed back. We all just kind of had to push pause and wait and see oh, is this going to be a few weeks? Is this going to be a few months? Like, are yeah. we going to have to live with this? Um, but it's becoming a little bit clearer now. So we do have a launch coming up. It will be fall 2020. If anyone's interested, they should watch us for that. Um, and then we kind of took some time to just think about just diversifying what we do and taking that time to do some work on ourselves. So like, mm maybe putting together a catalog, which has been a struggle to find time to do in the past, we'll be able to do now. Um, you know, just find yourself at peace, just get grounded. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe before we conclude on that point of becoming grounded, I wonder if you'd say a word about the, um, the shop uh, that seems to be persistently back it's its business seems to have been persistently beckoned over the course of with the two phone calls this uh, conversation where are you located and what's the shop that you're in at the moment oh yeah so uh in 2019 jack pine press partnered with keratin books which is a little used bookstore in saskatoon and it's been kind of a great opportunity for us because we're able to share our office space and our shop space to have a little brick and mortar shop for jack pine finally <laughs> um and I'm kind of here, like, captaining both ships at once. So sorry about the phone. Um, no, no. Yeah, come hang out. Check out some really great poetry if you're in Saskatoon. Um, yeah. Amy, thank you. We've done it. Yeah. Um, this has been episode nine of Talking with the Presses. And um, this was a treat. Thank you. Take care. You too.